Hey, here I am in the middle of a holiday weekend, interrupting your uh, celebrations uh, with a call to mindfulness and uh, to uh, some critical thinking, to listening to who uh, God might be calling us to be. And I'm doing that in the middle of a sort of laid back holiday weekend. So this is a call to mindfulness. And maybe it's even a call to picking up a book. You know that I love to read and I love to try to promote reading. Um, how about the 1937 novella by John Steinbeck, uh, who wrote The Grapes of Wrath, who wrote uh, East of Eden. How about picking up a smaller book than those two, though? Uh, it seems like he either wrote big, long books or short ones, uh, little novellas. Uh, how about the 1937 novella um, of mice and men. How about uh, this weekend maybe making a, a few hours set aside uh, with, with your favorite beverage uh, on the patio and, uh, and sort of knocking out this book. Um, uh, Steinbeck is one of my, I guess, I don't know, top, top ten maybe, five authors. And, uh, and so this is an easy recommend of mice and men. And I'm cracking into your holiday weekend uh, with an American author here. Uh, telling a very American story, uh, which is pretty famous at this point and is a pretty easy read. Um, in his lifetime, John Steinbeck was often accused of being a socialist, which, uh, you know, fits uh, or hits strangely into this holiday weekend. Uh, I would say that while some of what he writes about has this uh, possibly socialist tangent feel, that that is not necessarily what he's talking about. And, and I don't think he was a communist or a socialist. Um, uh, Steinbeck uh, was friends with some biologists and has written other books, and he was very interested in how interconnected uh, our environment, our world is. You know, like how one thing could happen over here and how that affects all of us. And, and that's what, you know, that, that's sometimes mistaken for socialism, that an that a event can happen and that that you know will have this ramification that affects lots of people, uh, but to me this is a big theme in Steinbeck, and what he wants to do I think in Mice and Men is uh, sort of uh, point out uh, where some people were in the world. Remember 1937, the economy, the the places that that, that the country was in. Um, uh, he wants to point out that if, if this is going on for, for some people, uh, that that effect runs deeper and it affects all of us. Not totally socialist, although socialist tangent, but be careful what you label here. Uh, I told you I was cracking into your holiday weekend with some kind of mindful things here. Um, if you know anything about Of Mice and Men, uh, you know that there's that famous line in it, he ain't heavy, uh, he's my brother. Uh, and so that sounds like this sort of socialist thing, but really, once you know Steinbeck, you know that his thing is uh, the interplay between humanity, all the pieces of God's creation, and how, uh, you know, uh, a neighbor can make a decision and, or go through something and how that can affect you. And that sounds socialist, but what I think it really is, is maybe a system about systems. And I think there's a difference between those two things. And this is a mindful sort of where we set in the system and what God's intention with this system that is our country and what that looks like. Um, so I'm not promoting socialism. I'm promoting uh, that uh, great 1937 uh, uh, novella of Mice and Men, and you'd be able to read it easily this holiday weekend. Good morning. Good afternoon. Welcome to Preparing for Sunday, where you and I take a look together at the upcoming Sunday Scripture text. This is for Sunday, July 7th, 2024, and you can already tell by that intro that I'm kind of using this as, as a prolonged 4th of July celebration. This is July 5th. I don't know when you're watching this, um, but, but um, you know, July 7th is when we gather for worship. But that's, to me, part of this holiday weekend. This, uh, in, ter in terms of the church calendar, is the seventh week after Pentecost, year B. So we continue in Mark. If you are a pauser, and I recommend being a pauser, what you want to do is hear this part where we're going to read together on Sunday, and uh, I'm going to introduce it here, and then you're going to hit pause, read that in your Bible, 
and then you're going to hear me talk about uh, where we are in the world and what this gospel has to say to us or what I think it has to say to us. Uh, the gospel is Mark 6, 1 through 13. Mark 6, 1 through 13. So we continue in the gospel of Mark. In a few weeks, we're going to get a long uh, excursion into John, but we continue in Mark here. Uh, and so we're in, in the we're sort of sequential reading. We've been in Mark for a few weeks, and now they're building up. And we're in Mark 6, 1 through 13. And this is where you pause it and read that text for yourself before I uh, tell you what, I, what I'm hearing here, okay? All right, so um, what, what I think uh, we're going to look at here is how this builds up, and uh, we're going to look at uh, uh, what the story as a whole is saying to us, how it speaks to us this holiday weekend, and what God's uh, coming kingdom looks like, and what we should be mindful for, what should through all the noise of, of our country and, and the celebration of uh, this holiday, through all the noise of uh, all this election stuff, what God's proclamation looks like. And so what I want to do here is do a, a, a pretty lengthy rundown of not just our text. I'm not really going to talk about our text a lot, uh, but I'm going to talk to you about Mark a lot. This is right on the heels of last week's sermon where I talked about how miracles are pretty present in Mark, and now I want to uh, take off on that a little bit. And uh, I'm going to spend some time talking to you about the miracles in Mark. There are 20 of them. Uh, by my count, 16 of them are healings, and 4 of them are natural uh, miracles, events that involve nature. So those begin in Mark 1. 21 through 28, where Jesus heals in a synagogue. Um, yeah, Mark 1, 21 through 28. Faith, and how faithful the person healed is, is not mentioned there. So it's not about the person's ability, and you're going to see that theme in these healing stories uh, to some degree, but then there are, there's variances too. All right, so then the next healing story rides right on the heels of that one. It's 1, Mark 1, 29 through 31 where uh, Jesus heals Peter's mother-in-law. Her faith, her repentance, her belief is, again, not mentioned. So there's two in a row like that. Uh, the next healing, it rides right on the heels of these. These tend to be put in segments together. Uh, we get chapter 1, verses 32 through 34, where it says Jesus healed all the sick in the, in the people who had gathered around him. Again, there is no account taken of their ability of, of, of their faith, of their belief. And what, what I talked about last week in the sermon is that often we, we turn the miracles into these stories of how can we drag ourselves up by our bootstraps? How can we, we have this American interpretation of, of, of how can these help us? And God is not talking about you and I as individuals and how we can work harder to attain miracles for ourselves. What Jesus is doing in these miracles is showing God's power over all of creation. And it's talking about how God breaks in with, with this beautiful power, how it can be miraculous. But it's also talking about how it uh, comes in times when we need it, uh, which is great to hear as people who are often in need. Um, but it also can't be uh, quantified when and how it's going to come. And Mark is filled with this. Um, after 132 through 34, we get a bit of a gap, and then we get 140 through 45, where Jesus heals a leper. Uh, the leper is not, his faith, his ability to attain this healing is not mentioned. Uh, and then we get to chapter 2, verses 1 through 12, Jesus heals a paralytic. Um, uh, here, faith is mentioned, but it is not the paralytic's faith. He sees the faith of the people, his friends, and in seeing their faith, um, addresses the paralytic's issue and heals him. And so here, faith is involved, but it has nothing to do with the person being saved. Uh, and so that starts to sort of diversify the formula here, uh, that this is about more than um, bootstrap, formulaic, if I say the right thing, God will do what I want. In chapter 3, verses 1 through 6, Jesus heals a man with a withered hand. 
faith is again not mentioned. It's not about his faith or his prayers or his repentance that this healing happens. In chapter 4, verses 35 through 41, we get the first natural miracle, the calming of the storm, which we just had uh, in worship in the last few weeks. Uh, there, not only is faith not a part of, of why Jesus does this, Jesus goes out of his way to say the disciples don't even have faith. You have no faith. Why do you have no faith? Um, so now we're talking about um, uh, a, a major natural event happening at Jesus' behest, at God's power, in spite of lack of faith. And part of the reason why I'm talking about this is we look at the state of our country, which in some ways mirrors some of the issues all the way as far back as 1937, um, in, in, in the backdrop for Steinbeck's novel of Mice and Men. Uh, we look at our country and we think, are we lost? Uh, have we no faith? Just so we're clear, the, the message of God here on this holiday weekend is, is whether we have faith or not is not what controls God's work. God's work is not based on faithful faithlessness. We spend a lot of time in our country trying to decide who's the faithful one and have we brought this on because we do A, B, and C. That's not the, the case in the gospel. And we're being called to being gospel people, mindful people, uh, instead of these sort of formulaic finger pointing people. That is the healing that you and I are offered this holiday weekend, and it's a real call into something. Um, in chapter 5, in Mark 5, uh, 1 through 20, uh, Jesus heals uh, the Gerasene dem demoniac. Um, uh, and faith, again, is not mentioned. Uh, it seems like the demon itself has the most awareness of who Jesus is in the story. Remember, the lectionary has skipped over that, um, and I, but I mentioned it in last week's sermon, this uh, deviled ham story, right? Then we get to 5, 21 through 24, and then 35 through 43, we get this book-ended story of Jairus' daughter, uh, where uh, Jesus tells Jairus, who's a leader of the synagogue, to believe. That's the only talk in there about faith. He doesn't judge his faith, he just asks him to believe. Uh, Jairus obviously does because he's come to Jesus. Then we remember that that's bookended because in the middle of it is the healing in 524 through 34 of the woman with hemorrhages. Uh, and to that woman, Jesus does say, your faith has made you well. And so at this point, what we can see is, is if anything, it's not formulaic. If anything, the way God's miracles work is not formulaic. But look at the amount, look at the spectrum of people that it affects. Now you're going to say, hey, here we are in 4th of July weekend and he's spewing this socialist stuff. Now, I want to be clear, uh, I'm trying to talk about the system, that as Americans we live in a system together. I'm not saying that everybody's uh, worth the, the same uh, pay because they, you know, some people definitely have worked harder. Uh, I'm very into sort of democratic ideals, but the gospel is talking about the spectrum of all of us sitting next to each other. People who have worked hard and people who have not. People who are um, uh, put together and people who may not be. He ain't heavy, he's my brother. Uh, we're talking about uh, the connection that we all have as Americans, a thing that I feel like we've lost track of. Um, I think we've lost track of the spectrum of God's work in the world. All these different people in Mark that Jesus is healing, all these different reasons, all these different audiences, all these different ultimate outcomes and discussion at the heart of it of what faith is. Um, there's not one formula, and you and I keep picking a formula and then pointing fingers at other people and then fretting over the state of our nation, and here we are being being told about this sort of transcendent idea of how God works. Um, this week's text has a healing in it. That's why I'm running down through this list of miracles again. So we get now to 6, 5 through 6, and it has the healing of a few in Nazareth, and Jesus here is amazed at their unbelief, at their disbelief. Uh, Jesus here can't do as much as he would like in our text this week, because the, the belief is uh, blocking. Sometimes who we are 
and, and maybe how we are or how we function as a voter gets in the way of who we are as who God makes us and who God calls us to be. And that seems to be a bit of what's going on here. The people in Nazareth have a lifestyle, and God, and the warning here seems to be that, that God's uh, presence doesn't, doesn't know how to crack into that lifestyle. Um, the second part of our reading, which is not a miracle per se, although I would say it has some interesting miraculous tidbits in it, um, uh, the, the disciples then are sent out and are able to do healings. This is not a miracle of Jesus. It's not listed in the miracles in Mark. There are 20 of them. This is like 20 option B, maybe 21, where the, where the disciples in our reading today are sent out on the heels of Jesus um, not being able to heal. Uh, incidentally, while the disciples are out, Jesus uh, is doing Jesus stuff, I, I guess, and uh, we find out that John the Baptist has been arrested, and John the Baptist is uh, being... Uh, ultimately put to death. So while the disciples are out, they have no faith. We've been told just a few, a few, uh, a little bit before this, but they're able to perform these miracles. So they don't have the right formula, but they're able to do this. So really it's God doing it. And what we're talking about in the gospel is learning how to look for God at work in all circumstances, in people that vote uh, this way and in people that vote that way. Instead of stereotyping and building f these big, stacked up, uh, well, if they vote this way, they must be terrible. Um, we, we're having maybe a movement into, he ain't heavy, he's my brother, that we're looking at how we're connected. Hey, what's more important, how they vote or that they live next door to you? Or how they vote or that they're your brother or literal brother or sister? Um, what, what preference are we picking to, to decide our connection with a person or our, our wanting to disconnect. And really, what if it was something more than um, a, a vote cast for a thing we don't understand? Um, see, the, the, what I'm trying to do here is talk to you about the sort of systemic way that God is at work. Faith is sometimes a part of it, sometimes not. God works in God's ways. And you and I are not always going to be able to uh, see them ahead of time. We're going to be able to be a part of them and then maybe even sort of talk to people and retrospectively sort of say, hey, man, God is really doing a lot for you and for me. And that becomes a holy moment. And so this is that sort of mindfulness where we're paying attention to God instead of um, the thing about uh, person A or B next door in their sign in their yard, right? Uh, we're looking for, no matter how hard that is, this healing that goes deeper than that. Uh, so now we're going to look forward for the rest of these healing stories. And again, we'll look at the spectrum that these run. Uh, 6, 30 through 44 is another natural. It's the feeding of the 5,000. And we don't get much about faith there other than the fact that the disciples are clueless again, even after doing all these other miracles. So cluelessness is not a part of where God succeeds or God doesn't, by the way. Um, it sometimes is a part, but sometimes isn't. So if the life is so complex, and Mark captures this with this variance inside of all these healing stories. Um, 6, uh, 45 through 52 is a walking on water, and there the disciples are mentioned because their hearts are hardened. Um, in 6, 53 through 56, Jesus heals the sick in Gennesaret. Uh, faith is not mentioned. Uh, and incidentally, some of these healings are with insiders. Some of them are with outsiders. Some of them are people who would be like Jesus. Some of them would be people who are different. These things just run this whole gamut. And connection and where God is at work is not determined by formulas or predetermined ideas of what's right and wrong. And that's what I want you to sort of pick up here. In 7, 24 through 30, uh, we get Jesus healing of a Syrophoenician uh, daughter. Uh, faith is not mentioned, uh, but there is a little bit of interaction between uh, the characters here and Jesus. In 7, 31 through 37, we get a healing of a deaf mute. Faith not mentioned. Uh, in 8, 1 through 10, we get the feeding of the 4,000, a second feeding. Uh, the disciples uh, are talked about for their lack of, their continued lack of faith. 8, 22 through 26, 
they get the healing of a blind man. He, he's healed because he's so faithful. Nope, if you get the theme here, he's ha he doesn't have faith. His faith isn't talked about. How prayerful or repentant or put together he is is not mentioned. In 9, 14 through 29, we get the healing of a, of a man with epilepsy. And Jesus says there, all things can be done for the one who believes. Um, the Father says, I believe, help my unbelief. So he knows that Jesus is talking about belief, but that uh, uh, having belief is a hard thing. And so there's some fun things there that we'll talk about when that comes up in the, in the lectionary sooner or later. Um, 10, 46 through 52 is the healing of blind Bartimaeus. And Jesus looks at him and says, your faith is what has made you well. Uh, and then in 11, 12 through 14, and then 20 through 24, uh, we get the cursing of the fig tree which is not a miracle in and of itself, but that caps off these miracle stories. Uh, Jesus tells uh, the disciples, after all these miracles, if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe what you say will come to pass, uh, it will be done for you. So I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. And so what we're talking about here is the diversity of God's work in the world, the diversity of stories that make up what it is to be an American. And to be an American means an interconnectedness uh, to, to people of both parties and everything in between. And what, what's patriotic and what's American is uh, belief that... Uh, um, Despite our differences, we hold together uh, this one great idea that, that our place is a place under God, indivisible, and, uh, and, and hoping and working for and calling into justice for all. So I tried to run down through all these miracles. I've tried to talk to you about how there isn't one formula. You don't vote right and then therefore have better access to miracles. I do have opinions, and you do too, on, on what's a good vote for all these topics that we wrestle with these days. But we're not talking about uh, dislike, hate, being divided from the people who vote differently from us. What amazes me at this point is not that people vote differently. People have always done that. What amazes me on this holiday weekend is how easily we've been divided. And uh, I, as you know, and I talk about a lot, um, uh, the kingdom of God is for each of us. Some of these healings are for the right people, and some of them are for wrong. Some of them are for the people who get it. Uh, the people who you think get it don't get it. This is all about this sort of growing together and, and uh, belief that God is bringing God's kingdom, that America isn't abandoned, that God is still at work. The fear that we have at this point is, is that America is abandoned by God because of those people over there. When in reality, what we're seeing is this diverse, omnipotent power of God to be at work in our world, and that ours is one nation under God, indivisible, and, and being called into liberty and justice for all. And this is a thing that, uh, you know, I think if we were prayerful about, I think if we looked at the gospel and saw how diverse it is, um, we, would, we would see this. Let me give you a sort of quick closing practical thing of what I'm trying to talk about. That's a theory that I've worked through here. I'll give you a sort of practical thing of what I've talked about. Um, uh, I think uh, you may know by now, uh, but a number of years ago, uh, I was asked to be a part of our community's DEI uh, board, committee, group, and I jumped on that uh, opportunity, and I love the connection that I have with people there. Um, some people have said, hey, you're, do you, what a great work you're doing, John. And other people have said to me, terrible, I hate these things, and you shouldn't be on it. And, and, and a division has really arose over what's happening there. What's happening there is uh, I'm hopeful to be in dialogue with people in our community in a way that remembers that there's this dignity that we all have as Americans. Pe people on either side get caught up in the politics of what I'm involving myself in there. Whereas to me, what I think I'm involving myself in there are relationships, 
in a place where people came to me, they asked me to enter into a relationship with them in this way, and uh, I won't say that there are controversies or difficulties with it, but I believe that, that I'm here to learn, to grow, to be in relationship with people, and it's not a finger pointing, hey, you don't believe in this, so I'm mad at you, or you better believe in it or you're mad at you, uh, or look how good I am because I'm doing it. It is a complicated call into relationship because at the end of the day, I'm looking for miracles of God at work in people's lives. And uh, I'm looking for a connection where, where I understand I, I'm in a community with people and what affects them affects me. I'm going to listen. I'm going to be called into relationship and I'm not going to be fearful of uh, things. I'm going to be faithful uh, that wherever God's going to work in this story, God's going to work. That's the story of the miracles. That there is no set way, but there is in them a proclamation of God's power to bring God's kingdom little by little. And to me, we're in a holiday weekend where we're thinking about how great uh, our gift of this country has been and that our hope is, is not that we're falling apart and, hey, I'm yelling and mad, but that God has always been building, keeping us, and that miracles happen, and that you and I uh, would see those miracles, even in the midst of the world that we live in, uh, when we're open to things that we may not understand or things we don't know, when we enter into relationship, when we acknowledge the connectedness of all of uh people of different gifts and abilities and colors and creeds um, and when we uh, are, are mindful of, of, the, of the world God has set us into and then also we're mindful of our uh, sinfulness in that world ask uh, for God's uh, help in seeing where God is at work uh, you'd be amazed what you can see when you've entered into relationships with people uh, that God helps them and you see and so uh, that's a lot to think about on the holiday weekend. Um, you know, I think it's funny that Mark is probably the simplest of the Gospels, but in some ways that simplicity hides a real complexity. Um, and so I've had trouble the last few weeks knowing how to simplify, narrow down, even though these verses are so simple, they're a little story about a miracle. Uh, in this week's text, we get Jesus not able to perform things the way he would like, the disciples being sent and being more successful. Two stories packed together there. A queer miracle of Jesus and then a bigger miracle of God that's not usually listed in miracles. Um, but and they seem like simple stories. It seems like a simple laid back weekend. But I found that there is so much complexity in this uh, that it can be hard to try to draw out what the text is about for people. Uh, but hopefully you heard in this that I am uh, proud to be an American, I'm privileged to be an American, I'm privileged to be who God has made me, uh, and I am constantly prayerful uh, that, that my relationships with the community I'm, I'm in can be places where I can see and feel and know the miracles. And I'm confident that uh, where I am open to God's work, uh, whether it's through faith or not, God's going to do what God's going to do. And I would just love to be able to see it, know it, and uh, be a part of it. So enjoy your holiday weekend. Thanks for joining me. I hope uh, you were able to follow this. Uh, sort of a lot of content, uh, but hopefully in it, uh, you didn't invade your holiday weekend too badly. Uh, thanks for joining me. Stay safe, and I will uh, see you soon.